am your host, The Ascended Sleeper, and this evening we will be playing Mount and Blade. And Mount and Blade is a very cool, at least I think it's very cool, uh, kind of military RPG that takes place in like this fantasy, low fantasy medieval world. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. I'll let it speak for itself if you don't know what, anything about it. If you do, then uh, just bear with me while I explain everything. Starting a new game. Now, I'm by no means a professional or MLG player. I just, I don't care about making a perfect character. I just like to have fun. And I hope you enjoy it. If not, I'm sorry. Welcome, adventurer, to Mountain Blade. Before we can start playing the game, you must create a character. To begin, select your character's gender. He is going to be of the male variety, as I am sexist. You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was. Let's see here. What should our father be, everyone? Well, let's call in now. Our phones are open. He's going to be a traveling merchant. You were born the son of a traveling merchant, always moving from place to place in search of a profit. Although your parents were wealthier than most and educated you well, as, they could, as well as they could, you found little opportunity to make friends on the road living mostly for the moments when you could sell something to somebody. Oh boy. You started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as... A street urchin. You tough little bastards. As a boy growing out of childhood, you took to the streets doing whatever you must to survive. Baking, thieving, and working for gangs in order to earn your bread. You live from day to day in this violent world, always one step ahead of the law and those who wished you then, as a young adult, life changed, as it always does. <gasps> you became... Woo! Up squire. Okay, giant wall of text explaining about how I probably became a squire. Uh, yep. We're gonna fight and stuff. But soon everything changed, and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. What made... What made you take this decision was... Well, all of these are so cliché. Personal revenge. Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. Still, it was not a difficult choice to leave. With the rage burning brightly in your heart. You want vengeance. You want justice. What was done to you cannot be undone. And these debts can only be paid in blood. Alright, quick, we gotta make up something that happened to us. Duh, Someone, walruses, killed my family. Become an adventurer, right? Okay, no, no saving that. Okay, this is the, uh, skills, skills page. Obviously, you got skills over here, attributes, and then these kinds of skills, and these weapon skills, and names, and all kinds of crap. Health, and all this stuff. So, we're gonna, we're gonna start with a name. Let's see, I am, do something very cliche, I call myself the Ascended Sleeper. No. Silly. Black. Because we're angry and we want revenge. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I was thinking having like a very charismatic yet strong warrior, kinda like a like a rogue. Someone who works with guile more than he does uh honor and blah yeah, it doesn't really matter. So we'll put a bunch of points into charisma. Give it a ten, and yeah, get strength up a ten too. These attributes obviously affect these uh, skills over here. Now, I'm not going to take the time to explain all of these, but they're all they all have a use and a purpose. Let's get some iron flesh. Iron flesh is good. It gives you hit points, as you may well know if you already play Mountain Blade. Power strike's good. We like that. Can't get leadership anymore. That uh, determines how many troops we can have at maximum in our army. We already got trade up pretty good because we were uh, merchants traveling. Prisoner management, I want at least one rank of that. Allows us to capture prisoners. Persuasion, eh? I like to persuade people. What else? It's auto tactics. It's, I don't even know what tactics does, to be honest. Every two levels of the skill, eh, I don't understand. Don't care, either. Pathfinding, that's a good skill. We can find a lieutenant later on that'll have a good uh, pathfinding skill. Running around like the dickens. One-handed. Oh, Two-handed. Oh, 
just wing it for me. Crossbows. Yes, I like crossbows. Uh, so we got a lot of points spent. Got our name, the Black. Back in black. Alright, done. And just the character's face. Okay, so here's our character's very ugly face. Now this is not the most graphically beautiful game, but we're gonna roll with it. I don't really care about graphics. I like the skin here we got. It's a nice, uh, nice Nordic looking man. We go for a Viking kind of dude. Viking-esque. What kind of hair should we have? Oh yes, he looks like Loki. Oh yes, oh. Never good Viking needs a beard. It's a stash. It's a cool looking stash. Oh yes, there we go. It's a proper Norse god. Bring the age down a little bit because we're young and stupid. The hair color. Ooh. Nice red color. Can we get a black like our, like our name? No? No, we'll just stick with red. Nice ginger Viking Loki. Not Loki, I'm sorry, Thor. Doesn't look at all like Loki. I think that's red at least. I'm colorblind. I, I get my uh, browns and greens and reds mixed up. I think it's... I think that it's red, so we're going to call it red. Okay, that looks good. Done. You arrive at Calradia, a land torn between rival kingdoms battling each other for supremacy. A haven for knights, mercenaries, cutthroats, and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, or glory. In this land which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you will leave your past behind and start a new life. Now, on the rise. On a rise above a distant training field, you feel that you hold the key to your destiny in your hands. Free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures await you. Indeed, let us continue. Oh, <gasps> snowing. Okay, so here we are, in the world of Mountain Blade, quite obviously. Here we are, our party. We have one person in the party, signified by the little one next to our, next to our guy there. One person's obviously us. Now, kind of the point of this game is to go around, build up an army. You can have all kinds of different types of armies. And basically go out and fight for some of the kingdoms in this world, which I'm going to show you now. Here in the green, in the, the snowy land, is the kingdom of Vagirs. Vagirs? I, don't, I actually don't know how to pronounce things, so don't get mad. They're kind of like these weird uh, Viking kind of people. Then here in the yellow, we have the Nords. They are know, actual Vikings as well. Very Norsey culture. And over here, the red, we have the foul Swedian bastards. They're kind of like, I kind of always saw them as like the, uh, medieval English England, maybe France. Over yonder in the west more, we have the, uh, kingdom of Rodox. And they're in the blue, the blue here. I always kind of saw them as like the French Frenchy English bastards as well, kind of like the Swedes. And down here in the south, we have this weird desert that doesn't make any geographical sense at all. And the, the Kerjit Kahante controls this land. They're kind of like the Mongols, Golden Horde, and all that crap. So, where are we at? We're just a fresh adventurer, seeking revenge, the red beard. Yes, yes, yes. And we're not affiliated with any kingdom. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around, build up our army, do some mercenary work. Sell our sword, per se. Now, we only got one person, as I said. So let's let's change it. Let's get some people into our army. You know, I'm pretty badass. I can be a one-man army. Just left-click to walk around the world. Walk, ride, whatever. Let's pause whenever you're not moving. Early morning of March 23rd. Let's go to this village of Hanun. It's just a small little village. Seems unremarkable, apparently. You remember this village belongs to the Kingdom of Vagirs. Vagirs. Pop this into your torch. You can do some things here. You can go to the village center, maybe get a quest. You can buy some supplies from the peasants. You can take a hostile action, like you can steal stuff, kill their cattle. And if it's the village belongs to a hostile uh, kingdom, a kingdom that's hostile to you, you can burn it to the ground and 
pillager. Let's just fuck that. I'm gonna recruit volunteers. Ooh. Four Vagir recruits volunteer to follow you. I like that. I'm gonna recruit them for 40 denars, which is like the currency in the game. Alright. That's great. So we got five people. That's that's honestly not a lot. I mean they you can have armies in this thing to get up to like hundreds and two hundred, three hundred some. But I think we can take them. Here's a larger city. We don't need to do anything over there right now. Right on we shall oh, oh what do we have here? Looks like we got some looters. And there's all kinds of smaller armies and bands that wander throughout the world. The looters are one of them. They're like the lowest of the low. They're like bandits, I guess. They're really crappy. I mean, we have five, they have eight. They're following Sleepy the Black. And I'm assuming they're going to attack Sleepy the Black. Black. So... Uh, yeah, we can engage in combat with them. I think we'll win. It's five to eight. What's this then, eh? Lucky for you, or caught me in a good mood. Give us all your coin and I might just let you live. Yeah, but you go fuck yourself, buddy. Now we can do some things here. The encounter screen, I guess this is called. Encounter some looters. We can charge the enemy. That'll just bring us right into the battlefield and we can fight them. Man to man. We can order our troops to attack without me. That'll randomly generate the results. Based on the uh, number of troops and how powerful our troops are. Or we can pull back, leaving some soldiers behind us to cover our retreat. That's if, like, you need to get away and you don't want to get destroyed. And we're going to charge the enemy! That's what we're going to do. Oh, yes, let's see. Here are my little recruits I've recruited. Out in the snowy field that we all do battle in. No, you little bastards. Follow me. Come down. Uh, we're gonna go out and we're gonna find these guys. They're relatively close. Like right over this side. Let's get up here, get the high ground. Get him for me, or he's gonna hit me with a rock. Oh yeah. Always died, but it's fine. Yeah. So we won victory. Woohoo! Well, that just have to leave. We were victorious. We had suffered no casualties, but we killed all eight of the looters. Cause they're bastards. Continue. Here's the looting screen. We're going to loot the looters. <laughs> Let me take their weapons here. We got a rusty falchion. Let's compare it to my uh, rusty sword. 24, 19. I kind of like this better. Well, it's, whatever. This one has a better reach. Armor, 21, 21. Uh, Alright, it's shitty armor. Tattered Nomad armor. What about these boots? Okay, these boots are really shitty. It's like shoes, not even boots. So we took all their stuff. We're probably going to sell it. Got a, got a OCD. It's not right. Oh, God. Yes, I'm a little OCD. Okay. Return. We gain 77 gold from killing them. Party gains 10 morale. Let's see if we can upgrade. We'll click on the party tab. Oh, yes. Four of my Vagir recruits are ready to upgrade. We can upgrade the Vagir footman. Should click that button. 
doesn't cost them money. So here they are. They're much better now. They're not the uh, stupid farmers, the scythes anymore. They're actually like soldiers. From here, we can upgrade them to veteran skirmishers and all kinds of fun stuff. But again, we only have five people. We're not, not the best, in the best condition. Let's go to Bulbulbine. Looks very poor and desolate. So I mean, we'll recruit these three, three farmer boys who don't want to be in the poor and desolate Bulbulbine. Right on. Oh, 